Hi, and welcome back to my series of introductions to InfoPath 2007. This time I'm going to talk about using InfoPath with SharePoint workflows. In a previous demo, I filled out a form, and when I clicked the Submit button, the completed form was saved as a document in this SharePoint document library. If you look at this column down the right hand side, you'll see the values for form demo approval. This is because I've associated a workflow with this document library. The workflow in question is the standard approval workflow which comes out of the box with the standard edition of Microsoft Office SharePoint Server 2007. This workflow consists of a single stage where a designated approver is assigned a task to review the form and either approve or reject it. If I go to Outlook, you will see that I've been sent emails regarding this workflow. In this instance, I've received two emails. This is because I'm both the owner of the workflow and the designated approver. When users are assigned new tasks by a SharePoint workflow, they are informed of this via email. This means they don't have to keep checking back with the SharePoint site to see if they've been assigned any actions. If I click on the link within the email, the form will open up in InfoPath. The form has this toolbar at the top of the window associated with workflows. This means it's incredibly easy to carry out workflows from within my usual working environment. There's no need to learn specific workflow tools to carry out structured business processes. I can just click on this button to get access to the task I've been assigned. Here I'm given everything I need to complete this task. I can enter comments and make my decision. Now, if I go back to the document library and click refresh, I will see that the document status has been changed. It's now listed as approved. This is one of the simplest workflows possible. Workflows can be extremely complex with multiple steps, tasks that need to be completed by several people, branching logic, automated processes, and so on. I have created a slightly more complex workflow in SharePoint Designer as another example. This workflow has little practical value, but should serve as a good demonstration of the capabilities of these workflows with regards to branching logic, multiple stages and automated actions. I have created another InfoPath form. In this form I enter several numbers. Different actions are done by the workflow depending on what values I enter. The first stage of the workflow compares the values of the numbers entered in the first two fields. If the number of the first field is greater than the number in the second, the form is automatically rejected by the workflow. I will submit this form. And when I go to the document library and refresh, the form will appear with the approval status set to reject it. The workflow proceeded automatically without human input. Now I will open another form. This time I will enter numbers in the first field so that the first number is smaller. When I click submit this time the workflow is started again. Under these circumstances the person whose username is entered in the middle field gets a task assigned to them. In this case, my username is there. If I go back to the document library, you will see the workflow column says that the workflow is in progress and the approval status is set to pending. Now I get to decide whether to approve or reject this form. I have been assigned the approval task. I can either get to this task through Outlook as before or by clicking on In Progress and seeing a list of pending tasks. Clicking on the task in the task list will open it up and allow me to make changes and edit the status. Here I'm offered a menu to make my decision. If I chose rejected from this menu, the workflow will end and the value in the approved column will be set to rejected. If I choose to approve the form, 
then the workflow will continue on and calculate the sum of the last two numbers, placing the results in the sum column. And there is the sum. So there you see that SharePoint workflows can either be completed through Microsoft Office or through SharePoint itself. SharePoint can bring information out of info platforms and perform actions on that data. I created this workflow using the workflow wizard in SharePoint Designer without a single line of code. It's possible to create workflows with many more stages, with branching logic and with both human and automated tasks. With a combination of SharePoint and InfoPath, you can create workflows that take information entered in an InfoPath form and act on it in the appropriate way.